we are now video casting along with podcasting so you can hear us you can see us you can talk to us sound like a tv show we will be talking about the coaches round table and i see half of the game here half of the game there because i want to get eyes on these teams that we're ranking ready to do this yeah Welcome into this week's podcast, the U Conference podcast, The Extra Point. I'm Jeff Gorringe, and over on the controls is John Maverick Halliburton. The one and only. The one and only. Hey, you had some good things happen this weekend. I did. My you, team played like champs. We're going to talk about your team here in a minute. <laughs> you know, we're going to celebrate the small victories as we... We've talked about. And with me today, I've got, man, one of my favorites. <laughs> Executive board member, former Brighton High School Bengal, Dave Blomquist. Dangerous Dave. <laughs> Dangerous Dave. And I'm going to tell you, I, you got to admire this guy. I wanted to wear my Jets hat, but I don't have one. I can get you a brand new one. You can give me one. Black, green, gray, whatever you want. Hey, we're, we're sporting. This guy has been a loyal Jets fan since he was 10 years old. We're not telling you his age currently as of this day, but it's somewhere in the high 50s. <laughs> huh. Jet he, fan for 47 years. I'll let it out of the bag. He's, he's got a loyalty written all over this boy. So, Dave, we had a rough week. Actually, we had a great week. Let's talk about the great week. We really had a great week. We had 214 football games played. 212 went off without a hitch. Yeah. We'll get to the, the two that didn't. And, um, you know, we had a trainer save a life. Did you know that this weekend? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know it until we talked about it last night. That's awesome. We had a trainer save a life on the field. There are so many good things going on in the Ute Conference right now that to have a black eye like we had this last weekend, we're going to talk about that. But again, so at one of our fields, a trainer is down helping a young man putting tape on his ankle. And here's what he does. Somebody walks over to him and says, hey, there's a lady over at the bathroom and she's really struggling. Would you mind, would you mind going over and helping her out he went over this lady went into cardiac arrest she was having a heart attack right there started doing i think it was actually a gal trainer yeah started doing chest compressions got the paramedics there got everybody there and she, and she saved a life yeah but nobody's awesome. hearing about that so thank you thank you for doing a phenomenal job because we never hear about the good stuff. We only hear about, hey, Dave, you're not doing your job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not doing your job. So we've had a lot of meetings about the two incidences. One, we're going to talk about it. The other one, we're going we're gonna to let that, that lay for a minute. But, you know, what happened out at Mountain Ridge, honestly, parents, is just unacceptable. And we've gotten ourselves to a point where we've had executive board meetings, we've had president meetings that we just can't allow to have happen anymore. Yeah. It's taken away from the game. It definitely is. It's, it's taken, taken away, away from the game. The community, it's taken, everything. It's taken away. I mean, who wants a treat after that? Yeah. I mean, seriously. And that, you know, win, lose, or draw. The kids really could care less about the score in most cases. We adults fester, we carry it, we live through it, but our kids, what's the treat? Yeah. And it's, it's absolute garbage, people. Actions of 10% of you are out of control. Two weeks ago, I was out at a field. A team was being beat by four touchdowns. And everything that was happening on the field was they were losing because of the referee. It wasn't because they were getting beat by a better team. 
The referee caused all this. No, the referees didn't. And I want you to know, we are paying an extreme amount of money to have referees on our fields. Yeah. We're not tolerating any more bad behavior, Dave. We can't. We can't. I mean, going back, I don't want to go back that far when I played, but I'm talking about when I played, when I coached, when I was a board member, when I was a president. The concept was referees don't win or lose games. And they've never won or lost. I I'm going to tell a quick story here. I was a competitive coach. Not as competitive as John. Maverick over there <laughs> is a little bit competitive. <laughs> But I was pretty competitive. I'm playing Bingham. And back then, Al to Bingham was a pretty good rivalry. Yep. I lost 7-6. I had five touchdowns called back. I was upset. They screwed me. And what's funny is my oldest son, who's one of our legal counsel, we were talking about this weekend because we've had a lot of interaction with attorneys lately. He says, do you remember that? I says, oh, yeah, I remember it. We were going we to put together a video on VHS tape and send it into the conference. Five touchdowns called back. Touchdown number one called back. Crap. It was a holding. Shit, it was right there. Number two, block in the back. Number three, we had clipping back then. We had a clipping. It went on and on and on. I folded up my camera. Sorry, Jeff, to interrupt. <laughs> we got a good Grammarly. My <laughs> goodness. <laughs> we want to skip the, some ads. The woman's <laughs> dancing behind you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, back to my story. <laughs> Cut that part, will you, John? <laughs> it was long. <laughs> I have no idea who was dancing on the screen. <laughs> oh, my God. It was, it was kind I of I lost funny. the game 7-6, and I lost. I had to write the officials a letter. There was no email then. A letter that said, I'm really sorry for acting like an ass on the field. Because, quite frankly, I did. I thought they were out to get me. Guess what? The three of those gentlemen had no dog in the fight. They didn't care if I won or if I lost. I lost. Yeah. And it was a tough pill to swallow. Because guess what? I wanted to win. Like I said, not as competitive as Mav over there. But I was pretty competitive. But it's reality is... Coaches, it starts with you. If you say something, most of these parents have no idea whether it's a good call or bad call. And by the way, we've done a video. You've watched it during our coaches' certification. Helmet to helmet is not a penalty. Helmet to helmet means they're doing their jobs. They're protecting your son or your daughter's skull from a skull fracture. Not every helmet to helmet. There's three or four components that go into a targeting call. And I'm so tired of walking the sidelines hearing that. You're not protecting my son. There might be other options of recreational activities for your son because the helmet's there to protect him. Yes, it's a contact sport. But guess what? It's not the referee's fault. And we're asking parents to back off. So, Dave, is there any time a, ref, a parent should ever come on the field? No, never. I mean, you have, to, you have to, when you're home getting your player ready, talking about it the night before, that's a given. There is no reason to ever enter the field. And what if that's he gets hurt? Our, what if he has a bad hit? If that's a situation where he or she is hurt, and maybe they need medical care and the play is over with and they ask you to come on the field, that's a different story. Otherwise, if there's a, a bad call or there's a situation and you feel like you enter the field, that's, that needs to be ingrained in all of our thought process before we even go to the game. 
What about a coach? Should a coach ever enter the field? No. Okay, after this week, coaches, gremlin coaches, you're off. You're to the sidelines. I've had a couple emails saying, oh, give us some more time. No, no more time. You're off the field. You've lost your privileges on the field. This was a gremlin game. Yeah. Gremlin, that's, that's where we're getting a lot of the situations. We've talked about it. We've talked about it as a board. It's in eight, nine, nine-year-old players. Seven, eight, and nine-year-olds yeah. is where we're having the majority of our problems. Gremlin coaches, you're off the field last week. Get your wrist rockets. Get, get your players going. You know, back east, Dave, they have six-year-olds playing yeah, no without coaches. coaches on the field. Yeah. We don't need it. So... We have a situation where we are actually paying, when I, I mentioned this earlier, extreme amounts of money. To do. We're actually paying hazard pay because some of these officials don't feel safe. Is that right? Correct. I mean, th there's always been conversations back in the day, you know, years prior to this that you'd say, hey, to an official, get some glasses, check your glasses, stuff like that. Okay. But it's becoming personal. Now, now it's, I'm going to follow you to my truck. I'm going to follow you home. I mean, it's getting to a situation where officials, it's not fun for them, and, and they're also scared for their safety. And officials, if it's not okay for parents to come after you personally, it's not okay for you to go after them. Our advice to the officials is get out of the fray. Stay out of the fray. Go to safety. That, that's what we want. But first off, we, we shouldn't even have to go to there. These officials should be safe coming out, calling balls and strikes. Oh, wait, wrong sport. <laughs> Throwing flags on, you know, in this situation down in Cedar Valley or out at Mountain Ridge with the Cedar Valley Mountain Ridge game. The call that the riot was incited over was on the other team. Correct. But the coaches lost their mind, the one on the field, then the three coming off the sidelines immediately. They didn't even take time to listen to the official. And the official did say, well, if you will shut your mouth and step back, I will explain what I'm about to call. And then they got right in his face. Uh-uh. Not going to happen. So, penalties. For the next three weeks, parents, if you cross the ropes for any reason and you're not waived on the field, it will be a suspension for the entire season, the rest of the season. We don't want you there. We don't want you at the games. If you're ejected by an official, it's going to be three games. But guess what? When you go, when you're ejected, when you're suspended for coming across the ropes or by an official... Your kid's going, too, for one game. Yeah. And guess what? Oh, look what I got. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. I just got a 100 of these. A 100. In fact, let me do this, Dave. Hopefully my microphone will work because everybody wants to hear me, I'm sure. Yeah, it's sticking out. You know what this is? This is our new youth conference coach and a parent and parent apparel. Cuz to come back you're going to be refereeing a 4 or 5 game set without compensation. You're going to find out how easy it is to be out there. You know what? I might even put him in a Jets hat. <laughs> I can supply him. I have him. <laughs> Parents, coaches, we're not playing. Rules of civility have to exist on our fields. I was with the, the other night, Dave, I was with the, <clears throat> the guys from Positive Coaching Alliance. They're in town. They came in to meet with the Utah Jazz because junior jazz is now, they can't get kids to referee games because parents are coming after kids. It's not right. The, the expectation for a referee is so high that even instant replay can't live up to it. Yeah. And we don't have instant replay. And you go look at every level. You go look at 
high school, college, professional, there's calls that they miss. There's calls they miss. There's calls that you would consider a bad call. And you just move on with the game. All right, we're I, gonna, we're gonna, we're, enough. We're gonna be trolling the sidelines. Coaches, if you don't have your badges out visible, we're pulling you off the field. We're not asking, we're pulling you off the field. Parents, please, if we walk past, we're not asking. We will toss you this weekend. The executive board will be out in force. So will all of our presidents and boards. We don't want your lip. We're just going to go over and get the police officers and have them have you escorted off the field. You know, I even have a judge, a district judge who got tossed from a game two weeks ago. I wasn't aware of that. And he wants to argue about the law. How about rules of civility? How about code of conduct? Okay, small victories. Can I say one thing, Jeff? No. One last thing. I, I'm just, okay, go ahead. Just before you get a small victory, one last thing. Parents, when you bring your dogs to the field, don't argue with us for 10 minutes when we ask you to take the dog away, please. Dogs off the field. <laughs> please. Okay. Okay. Another sorry. story. We've had two or three incidences with dogs. One resulted in a dog bite. Okay. The second one, it ruined the kid's day. The dog takes a crap. Players come running in, slipped on it. He got it all over his shoes. Some of these kids, they're 10, 11 years old. They don't react to the same thing the way we do as adults. Well, I hope not in, in the most recent cases. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the biggest dog lover there is. You know that, Jeff. I got a dog. But, I, but me and Leroy, we're like this. Dogs and football don't mix. They're not a good, they're so not please. a good mix. Okay, John, Mav, good comment. Good comment. Every now because and then. if you and Bowser go home, the player you're associated <laughs> with is gonna be suspended for one game too. Again, we're not we're not trying to make things hard. But we are going to make sure that our players, parents, coaches, opposing coaches, and referees feel safe on the fields. Because this is the greatest game ever played. And if you're living your glory days through your grandson or your son, stop. Stop. Okay, no, friends. Back to the small victories. Dang it, John! Your boys came through. Mm -hmm. They did. They played good. I am proud of you guys. 0-3 over there. Cedar Valley. Oh, you're Cedar Valley. What a bad name right now. <laughs> Cedar Valley Mighty Mites. 0-3. You did it. Nice. Park City's a good team. And you know what? They're well coached. They're well mannered. Kids had a blast. It was, it was a nice game. So, because of everything that's gone on this week, because of the constant media deluge that we've been under here, I wasn't able to adequately prepare for Jeff versus the computer. You lose anyway. <laughs> Easy over there. Easy. Yeah, I called a couple of them wrong. Boy, I didn't see Farmington. The Farmington boys, man, they played well in the Bantam group. What happened, Bountiful? I had your back. <laughs> but you know what? Some great games coming up this week. Uh, John's going to post out there the, uh, our top 20 rankings to give you a little bit better idea of where we, we're seeing things this week. Um, I'll have my input on the, the Jeff versus the computer. But... We're getting close. This is the last week, uh, and then we're going to go into the reset. Hey, when you coach, we never had a reset. No. no. You, you like the reset? Oh, yeah. It's great. I mean, it really gives the second half an opportunity to pair teams, you know, with like talent, like like schedules, all that. It's it's awesome. So like, another thing we got to talk about. Dang it, coaches. There are teams that are better than other teams, and, yes, we have some mismatches. 
but 81 to nothing? It's like, seriously? John, you wouldn't have done that, would you? I don't didn't think that was possible. I really didn't think there was a, a, a way to intentionally do 73 it. 73 to 6? Come on, people. You're better than that. These are kids. We need to check our egos, tuck them in our back pocket, and get them off our football fields. But that's, I'm, I'm going to tell you, right now, coaches' egos and parents' bad behavior is the single biggest threat to youth sports in this nation. We're paying hazard pay to get officials on the field. We're having to throw down extreme penalties. I don't know, maybe there's so much pressure in this life, Dave, that people are just overreacting on the, on the field. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry for that. Again, it's a mindset. It's a mindset. Who are we here for, okay? I haven't had anyone playing in new conference for 12 years. Sometimes my wife on the weekend, she'll ask me, what are you doing? I go, what am I doing? I just watched a video with moms going crazy up there with their flags. I see coaches running down the sideline, pumping their hands. I see kids jumping all over the place, smiling, having a great time. That's why we're here. We're here to have a party, have fun, teach life lessons. My son doesn't talk about, hey, remember when I scored that touchdown? When we have conversations, he's like, remember that one coach I had? He influenced my life. Remember that one player I had that had my back? That's what you talk about when you get older. You don't go, hey, remember when we were 12 and 0? No one cares. No one cares. But there's so much good that comes out of this game. And it all comes down to when I go out there on Saturday and I'm away from my family and I'm not taking my wife to lunch and stuff like that, I watch a couple kids make a good tackle. I watch them go over and hug their teammates. I watch them go give high fives. I watch grandma over there crying. I watch mom over there freaking out with her pom-pom. That's what this is about. This should be a party, teaching life lessons, and walking away from there having a good time. But why are we so angry? I just don't think we have the right mindset. I think we think our eight-year-old and nine-year-old has one foot in USC, and it just doesn't matter right now. Safety, teaching them some discipline, teaching them how to work as a team, teaching them how to win, that's fun but also teaching them how to lose. Teaching them how to lose is one of the strongest lessons we learn out here. Oh, we don't ever lose okay. in life. No, and that's, that's why I'm here. Oh, I, what, what participation trophy do I get in life? <laughs> that's, that's why I'm here, because I believe in it. I believe in it. A lot of people that haven't been around football, they think it's kicking around a football. It's not. It teaches you how to work, be honest, have someone's back, all that kind of stuff. You know, you know what makes me sad? is we've had to spend this much time talking about this when I could have done Jeff versus the computer. <laughs> I could be talking about the games of the week and we're talking about the adults. You don't deserve the attention anymore, adults. The kids do. This should be a celebration of the kids. We want you to join us and celebrating those small victories. What's a small victory? You just named some of them. Yeah. Mom, waving the pom-poms. But it's not waving the pom-poms in somebody else's face. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes, John, you know this. A victory might, might look like something like, hey, guess what? Last week, we only got two first downs. But this week, we got four first downs and we scored two touchdowns. There's only 60 plays. And guess what? We only get to play football for 97 days. We're more than halfway through it. And we're talking about this garbage. I mean, one thing that's been in my mind all week, I saw it at the fields, I saw it in high school footage, and I saw it in pro footage. It was someone went over and knocked a player down on a, on a block, and then they walk over and help him up. And I sat there and I'm like, that still happens? That's what it's about. That's what it's about. Or so parents. Can... That should happen every play. Absolutely. Honestly. Parents, we want video of kids helping the opposing team up. And if you're not encouraging that, 
please just don't come to the fields. Don't come to the fields. We want help that kid up. Yeah. Because guess what? That's one of my boys that just got knocked down. Because they're all our boys. Yeah. I'm like you. I haven't had a son play in the U conference for well over 12 years. My kids still talk about Little League football like it was today. They look at it like it was yesterday. And the bottom line is, they love the memories they have. Because it's about making friends. It's about being out there on their own. It's about the treats. I, I mean, they, they still remember some of the parties, <laughs> the swimming parties they had at, at coaches' houses. I don't, I don't know how old this player is, but I coached him over at Bingham, and I ran into him at the grocery store. And he goes, remember our water, remember our water balloon fight? And that's what he wanted to talk about when I was going crazy doing water balloons with him and having fun after the game. So. Yeah, this is, um, this is sad times. But, you know, it's, we talk about kids. We talk about kids getting knocked down and having to get back up. It's not really sad. The next three to six weeks will define this season. We know you're better. We know you can do better. But we want your best. We need everybody. We ask the best of the kids. We want the best out of the adults. We need everybody's help. We need, we need to start with moms, dads, grandparents, players, sisters, brothers, coaches, officials, everyone. And we can get through this. We can make it happen. We can. But we got to take it serious, and we got to have a mindset before we go to the field. Please do not make Sean Cosper or Bryce Buchanan, or Elijah Kyle, Casey, Meredith, Rex, Dave, Mike Coulter, myself, Vicki, come past you and take your badge. Because we will. This weekend, we will. Next weekend, we will. Because we got to have referees. Because your kids, my kids, Dave's kids, they're worth it. Well, John, we're not going to go through the games of the week. It's kind of a downer. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to everybody. I really apologize. But guess what? Celebrate the small victories. Whatever that small vi victory is. It might be a block. It might be a tackle. It might be Oh my gosh, he got up there and swatted a pass away. Or he caught a pass. Or he made a great run. Forget about what's on the scoreboard at the end of the game. It might be a comment to a player from the other team that had a great game and you see him on the way out and you pat them on the back. It might be. It, it might, might be a high five to another coach. It Just... might be helping a kid off the field. Dang it, we're a family. And when one hurts, we all hurt. When one's on the ground, everybody needs to pick him up. Well, I'm Jeff Gorange. This is Dave, the Jets' Blonquist, and Maverick over there. This has been the U Conference Extra Point, and we're out. This conversation is now over.